Welcome to Machine Learning Tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to handle continuous valued attributes in decision tree learning. When we want to build a decision tree, the very first thing we need to understand is we need to have the attribute value pairs and the values of attributes should be discrete valued in nature. But if you have uh, an attribute which is having continuous values, then we cannot directly build the decision tree using that particular attribute. First, we need to convert that particular attribute into a discrete valued attribute. Then we can use the attribute to build the decision tree. Let us take an example to understand how to convert a continuous valued attribute into a discrete valued attribute. In this case, uh, the temperature is the attribute and the plate tennis is the target label. The temperature has the values like 40, 48, 60, 72, 80 and 90. Plate tennis has two target labels, yes and no. If you look at the values of uh, temperature, the temperature has the continuous values. It does not have any discrete possibilities like uh, hot and cool. In that case, we have only two possibilities. One is hot, another one is cool. But in this case, we have a continuous values. Now, the next question is, how can we convert this attribute that is a continuous valued attribute into a discrete valued attribute? So, what we do in this case is, uh, first we will try to identify the boundaries where there is a sudden change of class. That is, if you look at this particular target label, from here to here there is a sudden change of class that is from no to yes. Similarly, there is another sudden change of class from here to here that is uh, yes to no in this case. Now, what we need to do is uh, for every boundary or for every sudden change from one class to another class, we need to calculate the average of boundary values. That is uh, the boundary values for this one is uh, 48 and 60. We need to find the average of it. Similarly, for uh, this particular uh, sudden change of class from yes to no, 80 and 90 are the boundary values. We need to calculate the average. So, if we calculate the average, uh, we will get 54 as the uh, average value for uh, this particular uh, boundary and 85 as the average value for this one. Now, when we have more than one uh, threshold value, there is a question, should I select this one as the boundary or the threshold or should I select this one as the boundary or the threshold? Now, in this case, what we do is uh, we will calculate the information gain of every threshold value, in this case 54 and 85. The one which is having the maximum information gain, that will be selected as a uh, boundary or the threshold. Now, uh, we will discuss how to calculate the information gain of uh, uh, the every threshold and uh, which one I should select as the boundary in this case. Uh, while calculating the information gain, the very first thing what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate the entropy of whole data set and then we need to calculate the entropy of uh, individual uh, uh, attribute values and then we need to find the information gain. So, first we will consider the uh, temperature is divided considering the 54 as uh, the boundary. If I consider 54 as the boundary, there are two possibilities. Uh, the less than 54 will be 2 and greater than 54 will be 4 uh, possibilities or the 4 instances in this case. Now the entropy of whole data set is, the whole data set contains uh, 3 no examples and uh, 3 uh, yes examples that is 3 positive and 3 negative. So, if you have 3 positive and 3 negative, we will be getting the entropy as uh, 1.0. Uh, the entropy equation we need to use and then we need to calculate uh, the entropy. How to calculate the entropy and information gain, uh, the detailed video I have posted. The link for the video is uh, given in the description below. Do find that particular video to understand how to calculate the entropy and information gain in detail. So, in this case, the entropy of whole data set is 1.0. Now, we need to find the entropy of the possible uh, values. The possible value is uh, less than 54 is the one and greater than 54. If I consider less than 54, we have only two possibilities. And if I consider greater than 54, there are uh, four possibilities. So, less than 54, we have two possibilities and both of them are negative. So, zero positive and uh, two negative. Uh, the entropy of this one is again 0, 0.0. Next, uh, greater than uh, 54, we have uh, three positive 
and one negative. So the entropy of this one is uh, 0.8113 in this case. Once you calculate it, we need to put these uh, entropies into the information gain. The information gain equation is uh, information gain of temperature greater than 54 uh, with respect to the whole data set is equal to entropy of whole data set minus entropy of possible values cardinality of SV divided by cardinality of S entropy of SV. SV in this case is uh, uh, S less than 54, S greater than 54 here. Uh, here how many number of times SV is appearing that is 2 times out of 6. So 2 divided by 6 that is the first time. Second time it will be 3 plus 1 that is 4 times uh, greater than 54 is appearing. So 4 by 6 which is equal to uh, which is the one more fraction here. Now put the values we will be getting the information gain for uh, temperature uh, with boundary 54 as 0 0.4591. We will find the information gain of another boundary or the threshold that is uh, temperature uh, greater than 85 and less than 85. There are two possible values for this one. Again uh, the entire uh, entropy of entire data set is same that is 1.0 because we have three positive and three negative examples. If I consider uh, less than 85 and greater than 85 as the two um, uh, values for uh, this particular temperature. Less than 85 we have totally 5 examples out of that 2 negative and 3 positive that is written here. The entropy of this one is uh, 0.971 and uh, the greater than 85 are only 1 that is uh, the negative example. So, 0 negative and 1 uh, 0 positive and 1 negative. So, the entire uh, uh, the entropy of this uh, data is uh, 0, 0.0 because only we have negative examples here. If you put this particular thing into the equation uh, we will be getting the entropy as 0 0.1908. Uh, again, the how this uh, uh, thing is calculated, it is explained uh, in detail in the another video. Uh, just uh, find the link for the video in the description below. Now, the uh, information gain of uh, the attribute where we have the threshold as uh, 54 is uh, 0.4591 and uh, the temperature 85 is 0 0.1908. So, if you see this particular thing, we can say that uh, 54 is the best threshold or the boundary because it is having the maximum information. So, uh, this particular data can be divided or the continuous valid attribute uh, temperature can be divided into two classes where uh, uh, less than 54 is the one possibility and greater than 54 is the another possibility. Previously, we were having six possible values. Now, we have only two groups less than 54 and greater than 54. So, this is how uh, we can convert a discrete valued attribute into a continuous valued attribute. I hope this particular uh, concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.